hello my friends and welcome back to my channel today i'm very excited because i received some new incredible art supplies i'm opening them with you it's a, a palette a watercolor set by a gallo and they are handmade in italy let's see it's very well packed there is a postcard, a business card with a nice uh, illustration, a dot card uh, of uh, their spring green and uh, here is my palette, my new watercolor set. And I have swatch cards of, uh, I think this is cotton. And uh, let's open this. And uh, yes, I think it's, uh, wow, it's wonderful. It's a swatch cards. And uh, there are also, you see, grids. This is wonderful. Okay, I'll put this away. Let's open it. Wow, this is so lovely. It's a 12 half pounds. And it is the mixing mixing palette. It's a honey watercolors, aquarelli al miele. They made with honey, just like Sennelier, which is naturally hydrophile. This is so beautiful. And uh, here is a small swatching card. And uh, here it is. Oh, there is also a Tintoretto brush, number eight. Fantastic. Okay. Oh. I'm opening them and you see that uh, they have the name of the paint on the side so that uh, if I finish it I can refill it or buy um, a new one. This is uh, Lemon Yellow and uh, this is uh, an Italian brand of handmade uh, watercolor. It's uh, very very expensive, very difficult to have because uh, to buy because they have uh, they always sold out, so you have to subscribe to the newsletter. I'll put the link in the in the notes. And uh, when uh, they restock, they let you know. And you have, uh, if you want to buy a set, you have to buy it immediately because in a few hours everything is sold out. They have a store in Assisi, in central Italy, a beautiful place. That's the birth um, village of San Francesco, San Francis. And, uh, and also they are sold in a store in Florence, but I have not visited the store. I think that uh, maybe you find some uh, palettes, not the whole range, on Jackson. And, uh, but if you want to buy uh, something different or single colors, you have to buy online uh, directly on their e-commerce. And um, it's really difficult. It has taken me quite, a, quite some time to buy them because the first time I tried, I tried uh, too late and uh, it, everything was out of stock. Uh, they are getting very popular, not just uh, not here in Italy, but uh, all over the world. Uh, and, um, 
and I'm very, very, very excited to try them. The, you see that the, you see that they're half pants. They are very obviously hand poured. They're not extruded and um, it's going to be beautiful. They're not easy to unwrap, but uh, you just have to throw away the wrap uh, unless you want to glue somewhere. But uh, there is the, all the informations are on the on the outside of the pigment information. That's all. I don't think there is a light fastness information here. But um, yes, there is only the pigment as well. And in this particular palette, all the pigments used, I, I have checked, they're all light fast. So um, there is no fear of uh, fugitive pigments. That's great that they, I have put them in place. Let's start swatching. Okay, to be perfectly fair with the other brands of uh, watercolor that I have uh, swatched, I will swatch with my usual cellulose paper and not on cotton paper, otherwise it would be unfair. I will put my dot card here so we can swatch this as well. Also, I'm not rewetting them unless it's really necessary. And uh, let's see if they rewet uh, easily. I'm not wetting the paper. This is um, buff titanium, the most uh, popular version, very easy to rewet. The most popular version of uh, buff titanium is the one by Daniel Smith, but I don't have it. I have a Van Gogh version. And this is absolutely lovely. It's a, it's a slightly tinted white. It's made with the PW61 that can be used either in clouds or florals also for white roses is adorable. I have used my Van Gogh uh, version a lot for these usages. Uh, this is absolutely lovely. It's a bit opaque because it is a, a titanium white and it should be opaque. Let's go to Lemon Yellow Permanent. It's very, it's very, very easy to re-wet. Is lemon yellow? Oh, wow, it's beautiful. I'm afraid I'm going to be addicted to this set. This is a very bright yellow. It's a PY, um, PY 184, which is P smooth yellow. And uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's probably semi opaque. Let's try here. You know what, uh, I'm putting a black line here to see if uh, if colors are opaque and I'll be back. I forgot to do it here. Okay, I have put a black line even here and I have um, verified opacity of buff titanium and lemon yellow permanent as well. Let's go on with royal yellow. Royal Yellow is an intense, dark, transparent uh, yellow. And it is PY 154, Azo Yellow. It's not as dark as a uh, Gamboge or Indian Yellow. It's more uh, a medium yellow, but uh, it's very vibrant and it's very easy to wet. Here, it's a bit opaque, but we'll see when it dries, actually. We'll see. Then we go to Vermilion Red, which is uh, Pyrrhal Scarlet. It's an orangey red. PR255. Wow, this is so vibrant. This is beautiful primary red. A beautiful primary red. Good flow on paper. I 
and uh, it's not the cadmium red but the mustone it seems to be slightly opaque but uh, it's very beautiful we see in mixes uh, how it behaves because this is type of red that i never use as it is but i like to mix it with the red to desaturate it or maybe with um, blue for purple alizarin crimson hue this is obviously not the original alizarin crimson pigment which is pr83 because um, that it is very fugitive so all the manufacturer looks for replacement and this is uh, made with the most common uh, pigments used to replace uh, alizarin crimsons as a substitute which has which are pr177 which is anthraquinone red and um, quinacridone rose pv19 and pr144 which is which is a pigment that uh, i have never met before it's a red pigment but it is uh, apparently I should see side by side with alizarin crimson, but it looks like a, a good replacement for alizarin crimson. Very easy to rewet. Now permanent carmine. This is done with uh, quinacridone. It's a single pigment, quinacridone red or rose PV19. And this is uh, slightly colder than um, the alizarin crimson U, but it's very intense and it's vibrant. Here, very transparent. You see, this is also very transparent. They're both very transparent, and um, it's a cold red, very rosy, very nice. Now we move to cerulean. Mm, cerulean can have uh, different uh, pigments, uh, depends very much on the brand. Here they're using phthalo blue green shade. It's, it's very easy to rewet. It's a beautiful, intense, transparent blue. This is for me the cerulean I prefer because uh, it gives beautiful skies. I use cerulean made basically in skies and uh, this will give beautiful skies, especially when watered down. Look, uh, imagine an Italian sky in this uh, hue. This is wonderful, but it's phthalo blue green shade. Then we go to ultramarine blue PB29 and this should be a granulating color. We haven't met any granulating color so far. Let's see if this one granulates. Yes it does. Wow. I love a good uh, granulating ultramarine. It goes a long way. And um, it's very intense, vibrant, beautiful blue. Great palette. Now, Viridian. This is a hue because the original Viridian is PG-18, but it's very weak, non-staining blue. So this is made with mixing two pigments, Phthalo Green, PG-7, and um, Ultramarine Blue, PB-29. And the color is very similar and uh, should be more staining. Let's see, it's very transparent, incredibly transparent. It's good mixing base. I like to use Viridian to mix the warmer colors to make uh, as a base or as it is in uh, tropical seaside. Now let's go to Quinacridon Gold. This is by far one of my favorite colors and this is made with the py wow this is beautiful
this is made with py 150 which is uh, nickel azo yellow and po 48 which is quinacridone burnt orange a color that i like very much and this quinacridone gold is beautiful it's very transparent like all queen colors and it's beautiful it goes from the brownish tones of the mass tone to the bright vibrant yellow and watered down wonderful now we go to another one of my go-to colors and it is transparent red oxide a transparent version of pr 101 which is red iron oxide and uh, this is almost the burnt sienna many brands actually use this pigment for burnt sienna it's a reddish brown almost a brick color but uh, it can be opaque if treated uh, as in english red but in this version it's transparent and really it can be used as a burnt sienna i think and it's very nice it's also slightly granulating and i like it very much Burnt Amber. Burnt Amber here is made with PBR8, which is manganese brown. And it's a color that um, I've met for Van Dyke brown, but not for Burnt Amber, I think, as long as I remember. It's not very staining. It's very transparent. It's a warm brown. It's highly granulating. Look at this. I put more here, the mask on. And uh, nice when watered down. I love the granulation. I almost forgot this uh, spring green. Spring green is made with PG7, Stalo Green, PY84, and PB29, which is a blue. And I'll put it here. Okay, it's like a May green. It's not my favorite green usually, but um, if mixed, it can give a nice result. Nice result. Okay, we let everything dry and then we mix colors. Wonderful set. So I have started to mix my bath titanium with the uh, colors and uh, the result is a pastel color, slightly muted. Here I have put the original colors in this diagonal. So let's, uh, let's continue now with the uh, alizarin crimson. You see, it's not like uh, mixing a white, it's like uh, mixing, um, a brownish white so it not only lightens them and makes them pastel but it also mutes them down so if for florals it would be lovely now I'll do the same but with the, a watered down hue just to see what happens Okay, we continue with the blues. So take some buff titanium and I mix it with transparent cerulean. And then uh, without the camera, I'll do the watered down version. So this is buff titanium with transparent cerulean. I think I will finish it and then we will watch it together.
and our swatches are dry and uh, my heart is full of joy because there is hardly no dry shift I have this feeling and colors are very clean very precise very bright now all the beautiful things that we can say is that um, they are really wonderful the queen acridon gold is wonderful the viridian hue is wonderful the ultramarine granulates in a lovely manner even the burnt amber which uh, seemed to be seemed to me a bit weak in the beginning has uh, not much dry shift so it's a lovely brown it's not dark but it's lovely um, these two color permanent carmine and alizarin crimson hue maybe they could have uh, i don't know they could have uh, maybe just chosen picked one of the two because they look very much the same they have more or less the same usage and maybe put uh, an earthy yellow like a rose sienna or a uh, yellow ochre and uh, buff titanium also is a very lovely color but i don't see it much as a mixing color because i don't like to mix uh, opaque whites to my color but having said this uh, i really love this palette the colors are wonderful they are opaque when they have to be opaque like for instance buff titanium and lemon yellow but they're very transparent in all other cases so they're going to mix very well i don't uh, understand very well why uh, in a mixing palette there are multi-pigment colors except for quinacridone gold that is always um, double pigment because the original uh, pigment of quinacridone gold is not produced any longer but uh, having said this uh, it's more a matter of principle than a practical matter because i must say that uh, they mix very well this is the mixing read it's almost dry and I'm really in awe for all the beautiful hues and values that you can reach with this uh, mixing grid. Um, particularly, I love the violet. They're all very muted. Maybe it's just the ratio, but it's like a muted plums. Look at this. The grays are also lovely. You get, uh, you mix one lovely grays with the, uh, ultramarine both with burnt amber and transparent red oxide i'm not crazy about the mixes with the uh, buff titanium but i imagine that uh, for someone who um, very strong on florals they can be nice i prefer the transparent version um, the greens that you mix uh, with uh, your blues uh, and for instance quinacridone gold is glorious um, Crinacridon Golds makes lovely mixes with the, all the primary colors, with the reds. Look at this, uh, look at this wonderful orange that you get when you mix Crinacridon Gold with Alizarin Crimson. And also Alizarin Crimson in stunning when mixed with the transparent red oxide and burnt amber. Because it mutes it down, this is almost uh, maroon, it's wonderful. Uh, Vermilion also gives uh, a nice gray with cerulean look at this uh, and with viridian it gives uh, a brown uh, royal yellow is uh, very nice when mixed with burnt amber it gives this glowing brown cerulean cerulean um, gives wonderful greens uh, when mixed uh, both with quinacridone golds, but also with uh, lemon yellow, but above all, royal yellow. Look at this, it's almost a sap green, it's very lovely. I don't like very much, but never in my life, I like very much the blue, the green that you obtain from ultramarine, because I find that ultramarine gives some dull greens, so I don't like it very much, except when mixed with quinacridone gold. Here you have a wonderful blue, wonderful green and also I love the 
the purple, the violets that it gives. Viridian is also very surprising because you can see that uh, maybe you don't like to use it straight from the palette. Viridian, um, Viridian is here, the original color, but uh, Viridian when mixed, look at this. So this is Viridian with quinacridone gold. It's wonderful or uh, this muted uh, earthy browns uh, when mixed with transparent red oxide or burnt amber. So I'm, I'm very happy. I think I'm going to use this a lot. Remember, it's very expensive, so you really need to have a passion. I put the link for the newsletter and for the website uh, in my comments. And uh, maybe you can try a couple of colors before you commit to a health palette, because this uh, costed more than $100. So it's very expensive. But um, um, I wanted to try this for a long, long time. And now you, you see it, okay? Thanks for um, having watched uh, this video with me. And uh, if you appreciate my videos, do not hesitate to like and subscribe. That means a lot to me. For the moment being, ciao from Italy.